everyone. Welcome to Real English Conversations with Liz and Adam. I'm Liz Wade, and this is Adam Navis. Hello. And we are just two native English speakers who are going to have a conversation about this week's Spotlight English program, and it is called Life and Loneliness During COVID-19. And um, yeah, this program was, um, if you are a crier like me, it might have brought you some tears. Um, if you are sentimental, it might have brought back some memories. But we really tried to gather together some experiences of people all around the world um, who had the effects of COVID, who maybe didn't have COVID themselves, but definitely went through a shared experience and what that meant. And of course, um, many people have died from COVID so far, right? We're a year and a half in about. Um, and so there is that additional sadness, right? There is that sadness. Um, but there's also that sort of um, that loneliness that people all around the world felt during that time, just because we were disconnected from people. And that is what this program is really trying to get at by telling different experiences. So Adam, um, I know you have read this program. Yeah. Were there any of these experiences that really stood out to you, like a story that really connected to you or that you thought about? Yeah, I mean, the one in, yeah, it's uh, near the end of the program, um, the one, the the woman who has a baby, and then yes. has to decide um, to spend time away from that baby to keep that baby safe. Oh and yeah! Of course, like that is the the sacrifices people make to move to a new country to help their family or to like to send money back. Anytime where you're doing something for the people you love, but it's drawing you away from those people that you love, those are always heartbreaking. But of course, you try to do something uh, in the short term that's good, but it's just the idea of like, I, I, when my kids were young, or even now, like if I had to be away from them for any amount of time, yeah. that would just be really difficult. Well, and especially as a tiny baby. This is a three-month-old baby. Yeah. Like as a new mother, like you want to be able to spend time with this baby and um, yeah, to not have that is very difficult Yeah, that emotionally was, that, and physically. Right. I mean, and I'm assuming you also connected <clears throat> to that story, but was there anything yes. that, that resonated with you? And because the, the program has, has several stories in it. Yes. Um, well, I, <laughs> there were a couple that were really um that were really touching to me. Of course, that first one um, with the mother who had to um, shoot, well, who chose to spend no time with her baby. Mm -hmm. um, but then there was also, um, I didn't go through this, but I do know some people who did. The woman in the nursing home or the woman whose father was in a nursing home and um, nursing homes, if you remember, um, were like, they were just totally overrun by COVID. Yeah. And many people in nursing homes died because COVID is very, very um, deadly for yeah. older people. And so if a nursing home got COVID in it, many, many of those old people died. Yeah. Um, and so to, to hear her talk about how she could see her dad through the window, but then um, he passed away before she could talk to him or touch him again, you know, it's thinking about that last time that you talked to a person or that you gave that person a hug and like, was it, um, was it meaningful enough? Did you do yeah. enough? Did you say, I love you? Um, and I think that was, that was interesting. Um, the one that really, um, I keep thinking about hmm. for this program is, uh, the, the beginning story actually. Oh. Um, because uh, I, I actually know this person who who is quoted here, um, and he says that, and it's a street near near my house that he's talking about. It's a very busy street, um, and he says that uh, um, it was maybe a week into lockdown, 
and nobody had been leaving their houses. All work was shut down. And he goes out in the middle of the night and lays in the street and no cars come. And um, first of all, that I want to tell him, please don't do that. <laughs> yes. That's yes. not a good idea. <laughs> that is not safe I don't at care. any time. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, just to, it illustrates how quiet and lonely it really all was. Yeah. Like, you know, there was nobody on the streets. There was nobody outside their houses. Um, and so uh, that to me, I keep thinking about that image of um, that person just laying in the middle of a busy intersection and there's no cars. And um, that for me was really shocking. Yeah, I remember because I didn't go anywhere for, uh, I don't, I, you know, I'm, I'm misremembering now, but I, I do remember the first time I drove somewhere because I we were out of food or we needed to get something. Yeah. And it was very strange yes. to drive on the road and just, <clears throat> there were no other cars. There was just, yeah. you know, there were other, I, I shouldn't say there's zero. It wasn't like, but it compared to how it usually is, it felt like the world changed. And I know that I've never experienced anything like this in my life or in your life and even my parents' lives, I don't think. Yeah, they've experienced anything like this. Um, and so I it was very odd, but I will say this program talks a lot about the the loneliness that people feel and that disconnection. Um, my person, it took me a long time to feel that I did feel it. But because yeah. of my personality and I like being at home and I like being with my immediate family, mm -hmm. um, it took me, a, a, I think, a lot longer than people whose personalities are. I love people. I want to see people. Yes. I want to go out and I want to interact with people. Extroverts. I don't, yes. So I don't know how you experienced that, Liz. Did you, were you, are you more like me? Did, were you okay with that? Or were you like, yeah. oh, I need to go out and see people? I do think, um, because I have worked at home for um, a couple years now. Um, Spotlight is made up, as you know, Adam, um, of uh, people who are in different parts of the world and we all come together to make this program. So, um, I feel like I had gone through a lot of the work from home loneliness or the, the workplace sort of loneliness before in the years previous. Um, and so, but also our team gets together quite often over Zoom or, um, you know, just over the internet online. Um, and so this is kind of normally how we are. And I remember even just back at the beginning our first live show in COVID. Yeah. And um, man, thinking about that now, right? Uh, that we we were able to sort of get together and chat that way face to face, uh, even though it wasn't face to face and right. even talk with listeners. And I, I'm gonna cry right now as I remember it, but you know, do you remember people were were messaging us in the comments and saying like, no, we're we're like this too, and you know we're lonely, yeah. and we're not we're not allowed to go outside either. And it just felt like it didn't feel lonely in that moment. Right. I seriously am going to cry right now. Yeah. Um, it felt like it felt like a community um, of of people all around the world who were going through exactly the same thing together in real time, and. Um, so I guess there there was some loneliness about it, but there was, for me at least, a feeling of community. Like we're all locking down, we're all staying in our homes to protect those people who are more vulnerable to disease, to protect older people, right. um, or to protect our children. Because of course, at the beginning, we also just did not know anything right. about COVID. Right, there were a lot of big question marks and theories floating around about how to protect yourself and what was okay and what wasn't okay. And I think yeah. um, one of the things I know that that we're both committed to is really not just doing what's good for me now, yes. but what's good for everyone and especially not forgetting what's good for um, uh, those people who, who might not who might be a little different. You know, I know someone who has a, um, it's a terminal cancer and he has, yeah. he's doing fine, but he's a very high risk 
person, even with vaccines, even with masks, just because yep. of that. And I always, you know, that's the person who's in my mind. Most of the time when I'm having a conversation or I'm thinking about what does it mean to start to return to normal? What was normal? Is it yes. just about me? Is it just about, <clears throat> oh, look, I get to do things that, that were like they used to be. No, I need to make sure that everybody is safe and everybody has right. what they need. And if I have to do some things differently, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Well, and there's also, um, you know, here in the U.S., we have had um, we've had vaccinations already. Mm -hmm. um, and in my family, a couple of us have been able to be vaccinated. But there are some people in my family who have not been been vaccinated yet. But, you know, if I think about other countries, there are other oh. countries where vaccines aren't freely available yet. Right. Um, and so for us, oh, well, I'll just speak for me. For me, it seems like, oh, there's some new hope here, right? Right. But until everyone is vaccinated, we're all at risk, right? Um, like we can we can have uh, coronavirus variants that um, that cause problems. Um, so part of that community thinking is making sure that everyone is taken care of. Everyone can be vaccinated if they want to. Well, and that... so for me, there's, sorry, one sec. So there's, there's hope, but it's also like, um, it's hope for long-term. It has to be long-term hope. It's not like we're gonna be solved in a year. There still might be a long time. Well, that's exactly, I mean, that's the natural uh, extension of, so I think about that one person and what you're in that's yeah. that's my community you know my example what you're <clears> saying is with when it comes to a coronavirus our whole, the community is the whole world right you can't yes. you yep. can't just say i'm good my family's good the people right. in my town or city or even state or country are good until until this is solved for everyone it's kind of solved for no one right exactly Exactly. I <laughs> We're yeah, going to end this program really, on like, such a sad note. Oh. Well, no, but but I again, I think it goes back to like we're all going through this together. We all need each other. Yeah. Right? Um not only to be together and uh for support for being around people, but we need each other to to fix the problem. Yeah. Right? To, to go for the solution. Right. We need everyone um, on board to, for the solution to work. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, so that's, I mean, I would love to hear, well, I mean, maybe not love to hear, but I, I would love if you would share your stories with us on, um, yeah. on you know, comments or send us an email or whatever. Um, because I know that, I know that this has affected all of us the same, but it's also affected all of us differently. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I know, like you were saying, Adam, there are some people who are like, I cannot wait to get out and like hang out with my friends and do a million things. And I'm like, well, that would be nice. Yeah. But I also would like to go to the grocery store again without, <laughs> uh, you know, feeling yeah. unsafe or whatever. Right. Um, and I also would like to know that everyone in the world is able to like get vaccinated or, you know, yeah. is not in danger anymore. Right. Um, so, yeah, tell us tell us your story. Like, um, how are you feeling now a year on from covid? Um, what do you think the future is going to be like? I also think it's interesting to think about what. Um, what is our future going to be like in in two years right. or five years? If is something, something like this happens again, will you do something differently? Um, yeah. Or will you will will it will we just kind of go through it together and see what happens? Um, I think those are great questions. We'd love to hear from you in the comments. Um, yeah. To this video. Thank you. Let yeah. Us know. I was gonna say uh, thank you for for listening and watching. However, you're consuming this uh, real conversation, uh, you can find a link to the programs in the program notes 
below on wherever you're finding this. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook and YouTube, as always. Uh, and yeah, let us know what you think. Uh, tell us your story. And uh, thank you for being a part of this community where we can actually be all together and that we are a community um, who, who really want each other to do well. The spotlight community. So here we go. That's a that's a very heartfelt um, and happy happy and hopeful way to end this program. And um, yeah, let's let's take down COVID. Let's do that together. Let's. Um, yeah, let's, that'll be the, the spotlight team. We're gonna do yeah, it exactly around the world. Um, anyway, listen, watch, practice, learn, spotlight out. <laughs>